says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. May God bless you, and I hope this is a great day for you with Christ. Welcome to Today with Christ. We're glad that you've joined us for the broadcast today. Uh, of course, I'm Don Smith and uh, my friend Scott Ingram. We're here today to talk about the book of Romans, and we're going to be focusing on the eighth chapter of Romans today. We're going to see a video by my father, Dr. J. Harold Smith, in a few minutes, in which he talks about one of God's promises from this eighth chapter. Mm -hmm. And you know, Scott, a lot of people today are living, even Christians are living with a lot of guilt mm -hmm. in their lives about things that they've done in the past. They're living with a sense of unease. Yeah. Uh, about their own lives, aren't they? Yes, it's a sad situation when uh, you live feeling that condemnation upon mm -hmm. your heart and upon your soul every day. It, mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't want anyone to live like that. Mm -hmm. And yet we mm -hmm. do, don't yeah, we? We, 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 do. we pile those sins up when, when God says he's cast them away, mm -hmm. but we hold on to them. That's we? right. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the blessings of going into God's word and really seeing what God has to say to us through Scripture is that we are able to put aside some of these things that mm -hmm. are troubling us as oh, Christians, yes. some of the things that are causing us not to live our full potential in Jesus Christ. And that's going to be our focus mm -hmm. on the broadcast today. So again, we're glad that you're with us today. So let's take a look at that video from uh, Dr. J. Harold Smith on this eighth chapter of Romans. <laughs> another precious promise from the Word of God. So while that coffee is cooling for just a moment, let us turn here to indeed a marvelous and a wonderful promise. If you have your Bibles, you'll find over in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, where the Word of God declares, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now I want you to observe something here. The Bible says that if you're not walking after the flesh, but walking after the Spirit, then the Bible declares that there is no condemnation now or ever will be for the child of God. You know the Lord Jesus Christ suffered upon the cross for my sin and for your sin, and he died to pay the supreme price for your sin and for my sin. And when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and when I trusted him as my Redeemer and my Savior, all of my condemnation fell upon him, and he bore in his own body all of my iniquities, nailing my sins to the cross. Now that's the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now there's so many people that say to me today, Preacher, if you sin just one time, you are lost and have to get saved all over again. Now that isn't taught in the Word of God. If you sin, and where is the child of God that doesn't? I do not believe that there is a one of you looking into my face, not a one of you, but what at some time or another you sin. Oh, I don't mean you go out and get drunk. I don't mean you go out and commit adultery. I don't mean you tell a dirty lie. But my dear friends, how many times do you fail to do all that God has commanded you to do? The Bible declares that we are to consider ourselves as unworthy and unprofitable servants, even when we have done all that the Lord commands us to do. Still we are unworthy and unprofitable servants. But isn't it wonderful that the Lord doesn't treat us when we sin like a criminal, but he treats us like a child? Now that is indeed wonderful to me. I cannot name how many times when I was a little lad growing up that I disobeyed my dad. I had a wonderful dad. I had a precious mother. 
They are both in heaven now, but I disobeyed them many times, and my dad would have to take me to the woodshed. And oh, he had a leather strap that he honed his razor on, and I'm not going to tell you what he did with the other part of it. But I want to tell you, brother, he raised a son that feared and respected his parents and had a fear in his heart of God Almighty. But God, my dad never did cast me out. I was always privileged to sit at his table and to sleep under his roof. And so when I sin now, God doesn't treat me as a criminal. He treats me as a child of God. And this wonderful promise there is therefore now, this very moment, as I look into your face, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ? If you're in Christ this morning, I have some good news. You are not condemned. It doesn't make any difference what you've done in the past. If it's all under the blood of Jesus Christ, you are justified, and there is now no condemnation. Well, it's been good to be with you again this morning on Coffee Break, and on our next telecast, may the Lord bless you. You know, this is a problem that, that many, many people have today in Christian life. Uh, mm. We think that one time we sin, and it's, mm. it's the end of the game. And we, we fall into that trap mm -hmm. because we believe that uh, we are the ones holding on to God and not that God is the one holding on to us. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes all the difference. Paul, in this uh, great book of Romans, uh, in Romans chapter 7, he describes how he is going in and out. He says, I, I, this sin is in me and I can't get rid of it. I've got mm -hmm. these two natures struggling together, fighting with one another uh, over and over. And he says, what, will, what can I do? And at the end of uh, chapter 7, he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh, the law of sin. And then comes the verse that Dr. Smith gave to us this morning. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We are not condemned. We are not under judgment any longer. Mm -hmm. and, and we can walk in freeness knowing that Jesus has saved us from mm -hmm. our sins. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been set, made into a new creature in Christ. And when we fail, we have him, don't we? We have mm -hmm. an advocate with the Father. Mm -hmm. Something happens that's really uh, radical in your life when you accept Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you become a Christian, it's almost as if we're following a compass that's leading in one direction yeah. that is in the flesh. And it's as if our compass has been <laughs> replaced. Mm -hmm. And we uh, no longer find ourselves as attracted. It's not that those attractions of sin or the temptations go away. Mm -hmm. They're still there, but it's like uh, Henry Blackaby uh, once said, I think it was in the Experiencing God course, Henry Blackaby's a great Baptist writer uh, for many years, but he said, when we become Christians, uh, our wanter, the things that we want, yeah. that part of us that has desires uh, and has goals and wants uh, this or that or the other is replaced and we begin to want something different. Mm -hmm. We desire um, that connection and relationship with God that we have not really, has not been the center of our lives before mm -hmm. becomes the new compass, that that direction that we're wanting to go. Our desire is to be in mm -hmm. fellowship with God. Yeah, and it, change, it changes mm -hmm. everything about us. It really mm -hmm. does. That's why the Bible says we're new creatures in Christ. I was telling Don earlier, when I was a, a boy, I was saved at 10 years old in a revival. Um, I, I know I was saved. I went for Lord, I received Christ on the altar, and I, it changed me. I was a new creature in Christ. I felt clean all over. But I grew up. I grew up into these teenage years, and I began to uh, think uh, the lie that the devil often tells us, well, you know, God's holding out on you. Mm -hmm. You're missing something. Yes, yes. there's something yeah. more mm -hmm. uh, that you need, something more that uh, God isn't giving to you because you're not engaging in what all the other kids are doing. Mm -hmm. And so I got off into that life of, uh, of sin and doing things that were wrong against what God wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. But you see, he made me a new creature. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. I went to go participate in these sins, I could never fully enjoy them. Mm -hmm. I always had 
had this guilt building up on me. And I couldn't quite understand uh, why I had this guilt, this struggle. You know, I just couldn't enjoy the sin like the other people were, Mm -hmm. as foolish Mm -hmm. as that sounds. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many Christians out there today living in this, this nature where they are beaten down, they are destroyed, and they've never just said, mm-hmm. I'm going to live what God has made me to be. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, later on, uh, mm-hmm. my wife and I, we were in a revival again. And uh, and I got down, I, I'd been reading my Bible at work, uh, studying what the truth was, mm-hmm. and I decide I'm just going to lay it all down. I'm going to live what God has made me to be. And I have just had joy in my heart since there's Mm -hmm. struggles, Mm -hmm. there's there's trials that come up. Mm -hmm. I still sin, Mm -hmm. but now I know uh, I'm living what God wants me to be. And that's Mm -hmm. where true joy is. How many Mm -hmm. of you are out there today and you're living miserable you are uh beaten down because you're living in that that old sinful life and jesus has made you a new creature in christ and you not being he's not your lord today Mm -hmm. he is your lord whether you Mm -hmm. realize it or not and you're never going to be happy in that sinful condition where you found Mm -hmm. yourself in Mm Mm -hmm. once you've been to the mountaintop with god Mm -hmm. and once you've had that relationship with him uh Nothing will replace that. Nothing yeah. nothing will take that place of being in fellowship with him. And one of the things that I see uh, that's so sad today is so many uh, people who are uh, have walked with the Lord, have uh, really lived close to him, have spent time in God's word, uh, and they have been lured away by the mm-hmm. attractions of the world. Yeah. Uh, and again, like you say, the sense, especially in our mm-hmm. adolescence, we always feel like we're missing something. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I was uh, in high school in Dallas, Texas, a great city, uh, enormous number of things to do. And I remember uh, thinking that if I could only live in a bigger city, there'd be yeah. something more to do. Yeah. And But we can be lured away or pulled away from our relationship with the Lord because of that old nature mm-hmm. that's still at war with the spiritual nature mm-hmm. in our own lives. And you Christians out there listening this morning, you know that what we're saying is true. Mm-hmm. There is that ongoing struggle. But the good news here is that when we are in Christ, once we are in him, uh, we are in him forever. And he uh, promises that there is no condemnation. We do not live under that death sentence Mm -hmm. and that sentence of eternal uh, uh, condemnation uh, and the wrath of God. And as an unbeliever, we constantly live with that hanging over our heads. Uh, many unbelievers uh, are uh, know that there is no sense of peace. There is none of that sort of basic uh, sense of peace with God that the Christian knows uh, mm-hmm. because there's good reason uh, yeah. because they live under that condemnation. Yeah, they know it's coming. And, you know, the Bible, uh, there's much, especially in the book of Romans, Paul speaks uh, with judicial terms. Uh, this word here, condemnation, uh, is a word they would use in, in their uh, court system. Mm-hmm. It meant mm-hmm. basically when, when the judge looks at us today and says, guilty. Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. another word that Paul uses here in the book of Romans, and it's called justified. Mm-hmm. You've been justified through quiet mm-hmm. Christ. Uh, the just shall live by mm-hmm. faith, he says. And that word basically means not guilty. Mm-hmm. So when he's looking here and he says there is now, there now for no condemnation, he's saying the judge has made the declaration. You are not guilty. Mm-hmm. You have been set free, and mm-hmm. you can live this new life. You're you're off the hook, mm-hmm. basically off the hook mm-hmm. now. And there is no higher court of appeal uh, than God's opinion. And and when God says that we are not condemned, that mm-hmm. we are free to go forth and live our lives in Christ, uh, there is no other court mm-hmm. in which we will be convicted. Mm-hmm. We may be uh, charged or convicted or, or whatever in uh, mankind's courts uh, or whatever, mm-hmm. but but in God's eyes, when we are walking with Christ, there is no condemnation. Absolutely. There's no no uh, no guilt to be uh, to be born. My dad talked. Uh, he mentioned uh, in that little message about some 
sometimes when we walk away from God, we can expect him to correct us mm-hmm. as we would correct a child. Uh, and I know uh, one of the times that I had to give my child a, a, a swat was when they were headed off into the road. They were, they were headed for the road and I mm-hmm. said, stop, and they didn't stop. Uh, when we are endangering our spiritual welfare, God wants the best for us. Mm-hmm. And when we're stubbornly trying to choose something that's a, a, a second best or, a, or something that will actually be damaging to our spiritual condition, or, you know, we, we also influence others. Mm-hmm. And we are, when we are getting into behaviors that are damaging to the lives of others, I was so saddened when many of our pastors, mm-hmm. when the lottery issue came up in Tennessee, mm-hmm. and pastors did not take a strong stand or even supported it because it was good for education. Uh, that was so sad to see because we knew from experience, I had lived in Florida when Florida went through this and working as a psychologist there, I saw many families that were wrecked and destroyed by the yeah. evil of gambling, by uh, parents who took money out of the mouths of their children in order to buy lottery tickets. Mm. And I knew that was coming. And when we do something like that as a Christian, we, we engage even in these little things that we think are not really big sins, mm-hmm. uh, but they have an influence they tell others well gambling is really okay yeah, because yeah. i buy a lottery ticket mm-hmm. or it's okay to drink because i have a beer every now and then mm-hmm. or i'm going to i'm going to sort of slide the line maybe that thing that we're doing is going to be the thing that destroys the life of someone who's looking to us. And so our lives need to be very clean. We need to be following Christ. Mm -hmm. And when we get out of line, like a child who needs correction, Mm -hmm. we will get correction Mm -hmm. uh, in our lives. And we should be thankful for that correction Mm -hmm. because God loves us so much. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about that lottery issue, Mm -hmm. uh, to some people that's no big deal going out and buying that. But you're not thinking of your fellow man. Uh, the scripture always points us back to love one another. Mm-hmm. The problem is today we have this misaligned uh, idea of what love truly is. Mm-hmm. We think love is letting someone get whatever they desire. Mm-hmm. That's not love. Mm-hmm. That's allowing people to destroy themselves is mm-hmm. what that is. Mm-hmm. When you allow them to, to just fall forward and, and f- go deeper into sin and deeper into sin it destroys their lives Mm -hmm. i think about the uh speaking of being set free as we we've already spoke about uh elephants if you tie a uh, Mm -hmm. chain to an elephant's leg and uh then you bolt it down the elephant will walk around for days and he can't get loose and he realizes that Mm -hmm. and he's under that chain well, eventually, once that elephant is trained, uh, they'll put just a, a, a light rope that he could easily pop mm-hmm. and tie him down with that to his leg. And But he will continue to walk around. Mm-hmm. There are some of us today who are so bound up by that sin in mm-hmm. our lives that mm-hmm. we're walking around like that elephant mm-hmm. and, and don't even realize that we're free. Mm-hmm. We don't have to live within this sin. Mm-hmm. We don't have to... Uh, participate in it we don't see sin for what it's truly doing destroying us deeply Mm -hmm. deeply Mm -hmm. our lives our our family's lives our friends lives Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. i wish i just wish that that the church today uh whoever christian that's listening to this today would just understand how evil and destructive sin is in your life and how it's Mm -hmm. tearing you down Mm -hmm. destroying you Mm -hmm. completely destroying you Mm -hmm. and and uh, again we want to emphasize the fact that what is being promised here in Romans Mm -hmm. is that uh, we don't uh, experience the condemnation. Mm-hmm. Although all of us have sinned, all the Bible tells us all yes. have fallen short of the glory of God. That's the hamartia, that Greek word that means missing the target. Mm-hmm. The target is to live lives that would glorify God. And many yeah. of us fail to do that Absolutely. daily. Absolutely. And although uh, our lives may not be uh, just blatantly and rebelliously sinful, uh, but still we come short mm-hmm. of that mark of the glory 
glory of God. But when we do that, we find that God is always ready to forgive us uh, if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to put those sins away. One of the roles of Satan is one of the ways he's described is as the accuser. Mm -hmm. And often we hear that internal voice, which I think also is sometimes the voice of Satan, which tells us you're still guilty. You haven't been forgiven for this or you've done this or remember that time in your past when you did this really awful thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, many Christians are robbed of their uh, joyfulness and their uh, serving Christ. They're also limited. Sometimes people feel so guilty about their past, which is uh, forgiven uh, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Uh, But they feel so guilty about that life that they lived before that it limits them in testifying about their lives or in serving Christ in a role in which they're called to serve. Yeah, and that, you know that's one of the things when I was living out in in a sinful state. Uh, the problem was I was not in this Word of God. I remember my dad constantly mm-hmm. telling me, "You need to read your Bible. You mm-hmm. need to read your Bible." Mm-hmm. I did need to read my Bible mm-hmm. because, uh, like Don said, how did he know that uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive mm-hmm. us our sins? Mm-hmm. He read it in the Bible. That's right. You read yeah. it in the Bible, yeah. and and that's what you have to have. You can understand this Bible. There are people in the world mm-hmm. today, uh, liberal churches. Uh, just common people on the street. They claim that this is so confusing. It's just, um, you can't understand what it's saying. Mm-hmm. It's all mixed up. There's so many different denominations. Mm-hmm. But the truth is that Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit, will mm-hmm. give you the ability to understand what this mm-hmm. word says. Mm-hmm. And um, that's one video we want to share with you today. Uh, Dr. Smith spoke on that later on in his life about how we can understand what the Bible says. We don't have to uh, be blind to the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, Let's take a moment and take a look at that video. Okay. Have you ever tried to win somebody to Jesus Christ and then look you straight in the face and say, Preacher, there are so many denominations They are so different, so so many different teachings. And I hear this on the television and I hear this on the radio and there's so many doctrines under I can't understand them. And I just don't believe any of them. Well, this Bible has the answer. You remember what God says? God said, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether whether I speak of myself, That's John chapter 7 and verse 17. God said, if you're willing to do what I want you to do, if you're willing to do my will, then I tell you, I'll reveal to you the true doctrine of the Word of God. I know what the Bible teaches about the virgin birth. I know what the Bible teaches, brother, about the blood atonement. I know what the Bible teaches about the death of the Lord Jesus upon the cross. I know what the Bible teaches about his bodily resurrection on the third day. I know what the Bible teaches about his ascension. I know what the Bible teaches about his glorious second coming. And neighbor, there is no reason why you cannot understand these tremendous doctrines of the Bible. The world tells us a lot of untruths about the Bible. It tells us, well, you can't understand it. Uh, It's old-fashioned, and therefore it's no longer relevant. It's uh, out of date, uh, and so forth. It really doesn't have a place in our modern world. All of those things are absolute lies. Absolutely. Uh, And if you want to live your life based on a lie, then uh, believe that about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Uh, Many of the people that have criticisms about the Bible have never spent time even giving it a fair shot. They've, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't like Shakespeare uh, in high school, perhaps, and mm-hmm. so they didn't like reading the Bible uh, because the language seemed kind of similar in the King James and so forth. But mm-hmm. if you spend some time with uh, the Bible, you're going to find out that you can understand probably 95, 98 percent of it is very, very clear yes. and plain. The struggle with reading the Bible will come in your response to it. Will you allow it to speak to your heart and or will you read it uh, uh, critically? 
uh, critically and with anger and wrath and uh, judgment in your heart? Or will you open your heart as you read God's Word and what He has to say uh, for you? Mm -hmm. And that's what it has to do. It has to Mm -hmm. change you. You don't change it. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, I think, he went through and, and cut every miracle out of the Bible and said he was creating his own Bible. Today, they're not reading that Bible. They're Mm -hmm. reading this one, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I had to do as a young man, as I was speaking of earlier when I was in sin and and different things. I sat down at work, and I had this uh, New Testament that uh, a Gideon had handed to me. And I I sat down on my break time, and I said, well, I'm finally going to do this. I'm finally going to read the Word of God and Mm -hmm. see what it has to say. And so I picked an easy book. I picked Romans. Not. (laughs) Not an easy book. (laughs) Not an easy book book whatsoever. But that's the book I picked. But it was so Mm -hmm. simple and clear in this. Mm -hmm. I looked at it, and the the verse that we opened the show with, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Mm -hmm. but it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. I read that verse and I got to thinking I've been living like I'm ashamed of the gospel of Christ Mm -hmm. Uh, and I shouldn't be that way Mm -hmm. now I could have looked at that verse and said well you know that's you know I throw Mm -hmm. that off but no Mm -hmm. I didn't cut that out of my Bible Mm -hmm. I I applied Mm -hmm. it to my heart and that's what we need to do isn't Mm -hmm. it absolutely and you know one of the things that's very important for uh, us as we are uh, spending today with Christ as we're walking with the Lord letting him be uh, the leader of our lives Mm -hmm. and the reason for our uh, for our lives is that we will find that the world world likes certain things that we do. Mm -hmm. If we're involved in feeding the poor or if we're involved in building homes uh, for uh, the needy or if we're involved in providing free medical or dental care, we're generally going to get a pat on the back from the world. Uh, And they're going to say, that's great. That's great. I like that, you know, that you're doing this. Uh, And what they won't like is when we go on to tell them why we're doing it. We're not doing it because we're good people. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that because uh, we're somehow noble human beings. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're not doing that because we're good. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're doing those things, or we should be doing them when we do them, not for our own glory, but to bring attention to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, that God made a way for us to be forgiven of our sins. And that way is Jesus Christ. And that's why we do these other expressions Mm -hmm. of love so that we can be in a place to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. The world does not like that. No. And they get angry about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, They like the physical idea of going mm -hmm. in and feeding. They Mm -hmm. don't like the idea of telling people they're sinners, pointing Mm -hmm. out their sin. But that's Mm -hmm. the thing. We're not Thomas. Jefferson. We can't Mm -hmm. cut the words out of the scripture. We Mm -hmm. can't cut the spiritual things out Mm -hmm. and leave the nice humanitarian Mm -hmm. things within. That's right. Uh, We have to keep the word of God completely. Yeah. Completely. And by doing that, we're going to be ostracized by the world. We're going to be pushed aside. They're going to think Mm -hmm. we're crazy. We're fools. We're idiots. Mm -hmm. But that's okay because Mm -hmm. uh, we have the gospel. We Mm -hmm. have uh, the truth. We know there is an eternity ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you share a man, you give him a cup of water. You can't just give him a cup of mm-hmm. water. You have to give it in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. So he knows uh, knows of what's coming in eternity. I can provide for his body here. I can't provide for him once he's and out. And we're not special in that it's that we when we say we have that, you can have that yeah, too. It's absolutely. a free gift uh, that God gives us uh, is his salvation. And his restoration to a proper relationship with him is only possible through Jesus Christ, and it's available to anyone who will accept him. And I hope this day will be a real blessing uh, to you and to others as you bless them with the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. This is Don Smith at the Radio Bible Hour. We're glad you're watching Today with Christ. Want to tell you about our monthly publication, The Good Neighbor. 
It's a great little magazine. We've been publishing it here at the Radio Bible Hour uh, since 1940s, and so it's just a part of who we are. It contains articles and sermons by Dr. J. Harold Smith, other more contemporary issues on Christian living, and some of the uh, difficulties that Christians face today in walking with Christ. I think you'll like this magazine a lot. Uh, we publish it 12 times a year, and our subscription price is only $10 a year. If you'd like to receive it, write us, send your subscription to the Radio Bible Hour, and thank you for watching. <music>